Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and welcome to the last part of the Gain, Offset, and Noise series. Today we're going to be discussing how to properly identify and set the offset of your camera if you have image capture software that allows you to adjust the offset. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Now let's head on over and learn how to identify and set the ideal offset of your camera. If you've been following along with the series, then you'll know that offset is essentially artificial data added to each of our pixel wells in an effort to start our pixels with a little bit of data prior to taking an exposure with our deep sky object. This helps us avoid any zero value pixels. Having zero value pixels is clipping our data. And an easy way to think of this is anything times zero is zero. So basically, offset is setting the black point of our image. And as a result, our histogram gets pushed to the right. And if you need any further clarification and haven't seen the series yet, I'll have links to each of my videos in the description of this video. So make sure to check them out. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask away. Now, if you have image capture software that does allow you to adjust the offset of your camera, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to find the ideal offset for your camera. Now, before doing this, it's important to make sure that you have the lens cap on your camera and you're in a dark room because we don't want to have any light leaks affect the data that we're about to collect. Now, here we're in Nina and I have my ASI 2600mm camera hooked up and I have the camera at the default offset of 50. And this is where we're gonna start. So we're gonna go to the imaging tab and we wanna make sure to grab our statistics. And statistics is right up at this icon over here. So sometimes depending where you have your statistics anywhere in this imaging screen, uh, it's a little bit hard to see all of the data that we're going to be looking at at the same time. So all you have to do is just grab it and pull it out of its location and we can easily see what we're looking for. Now we can also see um, Nina's histogram here. Now Nina's histogram, it's not sensitive enough to show you actually off of the left wall. So we're not really going to pay attention to this portion of it. What matters and what we're going to be paying attention to is going to be the mean and the min. So the goal of this is to see exactly what our offset is. So we don't want to collect any additional data. Therefore, we're going to be using the shortest possible exposures. Pretty much, we're going to be taking bias frames. So for this, I'm going to use an exposure time of 0.0001. And we'll take a quick snapshot. And what we're going to see here is the mean value is 502.39. That is an ADU value. And the minimum value is 394. Now, here's where it gets a little bit important. And as you're setting your offset, some cameras, some software allow you to set a very high offset, sometimes in the thousands. Now, if we take a look at my camera here, I have a range that I can set of zero to 50. Now, when you start getting into the thousands, this minimum value can start climbing very quickly. And one thing to keep in mind, another thing that we cover in the series is your pixels have a maximum capacity called the full well depth capacity. In this case, the ASI 2600mm camera has a maximum capacity of 65,080U. In other words, the higher you make this number, the less of your well capacity you have. And the consequence of that is you are reducing the dynamic range of your camera. So what's the overall goal of this exercise? What we're trying to do is get the lowest possible minimum ADU value 
and the least amount of pixels. Now I'll show you an example of black clipping. If we head back into equipment and we set our offset to zero, let's take another exposure. And what we're going to see is a much different uh, set of numbers here. In fact, I have 7,764,857 pixels with a value of zero. We want to avoid zeros. So if we end up putting our offset to a value of five, and then we go ahead and take another exposure, you can see that we're getting a lot closer. Now we have 4,415 pixels with a value of zero. Again, we increased the offset, meaning we added more artificial data, so that lessened the amount of pixels at a zero value. But again, we want some value within this minimum column or minimum row. So if we go ahead and we set our offset to 20, and take another exposure, we're gonna see now we have a value. Our minimum ADU value measured across our pixel array was 66 ADU, and only one pixel had that. That is actually very good. Again, when we're talking a full well depth capacity of 65,000 ADU, and make sure to check your camera because they're not all the same. When we're talking 66, we do not, like, we're not talking a very high percentage. So this is actually very good. But you also want to make sure that you have a buffer. Again, another um, topic that we cover in the series is our pixels collect different amounts of photons during different exposures. So you can have the same pixel that'll collect X amount of photons and then in the next exposure collect Y amount of photons. It's not always going to be the same and that variance is noise. And depending on how it is being presented, it's shot noise, dark current, read noise, and uh, again, if you haven't seen this series, make sure to check out those videos that I have in the description of this video. I go over all of this. And as always, make sure to ask questions if you have any. A prime example and a good visualization of this, if we take another exposure, our minimum value was 66, and now it's 73 across one pixel. Let's take another exposure. and now it's 75, so we have fluctuation. So you wanna make sure that you have a buffer. That's the main point of this. If we were to go and set our offset to 15, take away some of the data, thus pushing the histogram left, and we take an exposure. Now we have 15 as a minimum ADU, which means we have more of our full well capacity available to us, thus increasing the dynamic range of the camera. And we are not black clipping. We are not at a zero value. But again, make sure when you do this, take several exposures and just kind of see where your um, variance lies. Notice how we jumped up to 42. and now we're at 12. So there is always a variance. Now, my personal opinion, I would try to stick somewhere around 30 to 50. So if we were to put this back to 20, actually, you know what, let's go to, um, let's go to 18. And let's take a couple of exposures here. We're at 46, two pixels at 46. Take another exposure. And now we have one pixel at 62. This is something that I would be happy with. I'm not so far to the right on histogram. In other words, this value is not so high that I'm reducing my um, dynamic range, but I'm also not low enough. So if I have an off frame, I'm black clipping. So this is, this is just a, a very quick and easy exercise to kind of gauge 
where your offset should be or an ideal setting for it. And again, offset is set very well from the factory. If we go and we put it back to 50 and then take an exposure, 387 ADU is not that high of a percentage of the uh, full well capacity of 65,000 that the ASI 2600 mm camera contains. But again, make sure to check the full well capacity of your camera because um, if this does get up there and your full well capacity is much, much lower, it can affect the dynamic range of your camera. One other thing to keep in mind, if you do set the offset and then later on you want to adjust the gain, make sure that you go through this exercise again as adjusting the gain can affect this and cause you to black clip. So always make sure if you're adjusting the gain, you double check the values that you're going through in this exercise and adjust accordingly. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Are you currently using this method? And if not, what are you doing to find your offset? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.